Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, fellow travelers. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for 2018. Well, January, t Tuesday, <laughs> January 23rd, 2018. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, and action. Today's show title is Fed Chain Spooks on the Blockchain. On this episode, we'll be talking about Fed Chain Spooks, Tariff Apocalypse, Smart Power Windows, Ghost Gun Terror, and more on this episode of Headlines that you may have missed. You can get show notes at isheadlines.com, and you can also, there's a link to the show notes for this particular show in, if you're watching on Facebook, in the Facebook description, and if you're watching on YouTube, in the YouTube description. description. If you're watching on audio, you're already on the show notes page, page. So join me as I begin. Headlines you may have missed and uh, here we go. Let me get, let me get my first headline queued up here, and then we're about ready to crank this out. Meet the government's blockchain spy, Chainalysis. Chainalysis is a self-described block surveillance company that specializes in spying on blockchains. And its its best client is actually government. So if you think that you're safe on the blockchain, well, guess again, Chainalysis might be snooping into your transactions and reporting them to the government. So this is from Bitcoin.com. Governments worldwide have been ramping up regulations for cryptocurrencies and hiring research and blockchain surveillance teams. Ooh. One firm that tracks transactions on the Bitcoin Core blockchain is called Chainalysis. Boo. And this year, the company has gathered over a half a million U.S. dollars on record from various government and law enforcement entities. Boo. Over the course of the past year, one company has received a lot of money from government and law enforcement groups, and that firm is Chainalysis, a blockchain surveillance team, team created in October 2014 by Jan Muller or Jan Muller, I don't know which one it is, Jonathan Levin and Michael Groniker. Let me just end this story with a, with a rousing ooh. I think you get the point here. Trump approves tariffs on solar panels, washing machines. President Trump has announced a tariff on imported solar panels and washing machines. And this article highlight focuses on the solar panel tariff. The tariffs were enacted in response to what the Trump administration has deemed an unfair practice of trade partners, including subsidies of certain industries. The potential here for further tariff announcements remains high and what remains to be seen is how these trade partners respond to this shot across the trade bow does it trigger a tariff war signs i'm gonna say signs point to the yes and, and let me just add that remember a tariff is a tax so the trump administration voted for well they didn't vote for they just unilaterally enacted uh, a tax. That's what tariffs are. They're taxes. It used to be one of the primary ways that the U.S. government was funded. So, yeah, it's a tax. So this is from GreenTechMedia.com. Tariffs will decline over a four-year period. The first 2.5 gigawatts of imported cells are excluded from the additional tariff in each of those four years, according to the U.S. Trade Representative Pat G. The USTR noted that China's industrial planning has included a focus on increasing Chinese capacity and production of solar cells and modules using state incentives, subsidies, and tariffs to dominate the global side supply chain. So this is in response, they're saying, ostensibly to what the Chinese are doing to protect their own industry. Solar windows could power your home and offer shade in the sun. 
Windows of the near future could darken when the sun is out, and when they darken, they could provide energy for your home. Researchers out of the Materials Sciences Division of Berkeley believe they have come up with a new photovoltaic glass that will automatically darken when the sun is bright and also capture electricity from the sun that can power your home. In other words, instead of solar panels on your roof, you can have solar panels on your walls. And this is from LBL.gov. Smart windows that are transparent when it's dark or cool, but automatically darken when the sun is too bright are increasingly popular energy saving devices. But imagine when the window is darkened. It simultaneously produces electricity. Such a material, a photovoltaic glass that is also reversibly thermochronic is a green technology researchers have long worked toward. And now, scientists at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Berkeley Lab, have demonstrated a way to make it work. Researchers at Berkeley Rat Lab, a Department of Energy National Lab, discovered that a form of perovskite, one of the hottest materials in solar research currently due to its uh, high conversion efficiency, works surprisingly well as a stable and photovoltaic semiconductor material that can be reversibly switched between a transparent state and a non-transparent state without degrading its electronic properties. This next story, uh, the headline that I've uh, chosen to create is ghost gun manufacturer arrested in New Jersey. Anti-gun reporter uses story for agit prop. So this isn't. This is a story that's more than just about the the news item itself. It's how the news covers, as 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 I often do here on iState.tv. So Gregory Carlton was arrested after a search in his home revealed he had thirty ghost guns in his home with parts to make more. The charge is that he was selling the ghost guns and not merely just making the guns for personal use. I uh, don't know the degree to which that's true or doesn't really say in the article exactly how they know that. And how did they come to do a search in his home? That, that, that part's not explain, but I want to focus on the writer of this article, Alex Napoliello. Yes, I'm calling you out by name, Alex. He demonstrated a natural gun grabber mentality by adding this closing paragraph to his article. In November, the Giffords Law Center, a gun safety group, no, 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 a gun grabber group. They're not for gun safety. I'm for gun safety. They're for gun grabbing. That's a very, very different thing. But he chose those words very carefully. Founded by former Congresswoman Gabriella Giffords. Now here comes the, uh, well, I'll just read the sentence and then I'll say what's going on here. If you can't figure it out yourself. Critically wounded in the head during a 2011 shooting in her home state of Arizona. I have to add that part because that gives her a certain level of protection from criticism. I mean, nobody is happy that this woman was shot in the head. That's a terrible thing that happened. But what she's doing now is a terrible thing. And I don't care if you get shot in the head and survive. It doesn't give you, give you a right to then try to lobby a gang with guns, the government, to go out and take guns from non-government people. It doesn't give you that right. And then, and then uh, finished here, implored web server hosting sites like ghostguns.com to pull the pages because they're afraid. They're afraid of two things I keep telling you again and again. They're afraid of two things. They're afraid of self-reliance and anonymity. And yes, ghost guns provide both of those things. He felt compelled to make sure you understood that the gun grabber in charge of the anti-human, anti-liberty, anti-gun agit prop group, the Giffords Law Center, was a victim. She was there for, you know, don't, don't, 
don't don't get don't be too harsh on that poor victim. So I just want to say this in closing on this our, our article, and I'm not even going to get to his article. If you want to read it, uh, click on the show notes link or go to isheadlines.com and uh, you can read the, the excerpt yourself. I want to say this to you, Alex, and I want to say this to your neighbors. If Alex is a neighbor of yours, be aware that you have a police state informant wannabe living next to you. This is a guy that dreams of a police state, whether he knows it or not, and he means to turn you in if you violate the rules and the regulations of the police state, because that's what he's demonstrated in this article. A willing shill of gun grabbers. Completely untrustworthy. Bear that in mind when you decide how closely you want to associate with this gun grabber extremist, Alex Napoliello, who chose to write an ostensible straight news story in uh, nj.com and 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 peppered it with agit prop intended to nudge the aggregate beliefs of his v- of his readers towards supporting gun grabbing Iowa Senate bill would outlaw guns on anti-gun businesses that's my title The title from the article in the Des Moines Register is Bill would make it illegal to carry guns in businesses with sign-banning weapons. So an Iowa gun grabber that goes by the name Joel Balcom, who also happens to be one of the privileged political class members of the Iowa State Senate, has introduced a gun-grabbing bill, because that's what gun grabbers do, to criminalize carrying firearms on business property where the property owners have put up signs saying they don't want guns on their business. So the, the, the best, I believe, and this is, this is good news, this is really good news, the best that this bill will accomplish, I believe, if it did pass, and I don't think it will, is to assure that gun-grabbing business owners lose business as they should. U.S. gives Turks cover in Afrin invasion. This is a story that we're following pretty closely in iState.tv. What's going on as the Turks continue their attempt to invade Afrin and and chase the Kurds out of Afrin. And Afrin is part of Rojava, and that's a region that we're following very closely because of their experiment, their ongoing experiment with confederal democracy. So it appears that the U.S. might be waffling in its support of the Kurds, with Defense Secretary Mattis suggesting the Turks may have some legitimate, legitimate security issues. And he says this as the Turks continue their assault on the Ra- on, on the Rahavan enclave. While, the, while this is going on, this is from Stratford.com, U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis said, Turkey is the only NATO country with an active insurgency within its borders and has legitimate security concerns, Hurriyat Daily News reported January 21st. In all fair, uh, fairness, Hurriyat, is, uh, Hurriyat is, uh, is one of the Turkish state papers there. Not officially state paper, but well, all but. Kind of like our papers over here. On January 20th, Turkey launched Operation Olive Branch in Syria to remove the Kurdish People's Protection Units, the YPG, from Afrin. The Turkish government views the YPG, which is part of the U.S.-backed Syrian Defense Force, as part of the banned Kurdish Works Party, which has been fighting an insurgency in Turkey for decades. The YPG, for their part, denies the connection. Well, wouldn't you know. So let's get a little fun story here. Grocery store. This, this, by the way, this is your your moment of lows, if you will, because you you gotta take a step back and and breathe sometimes and relax. Grocery store fires incompetent worker. Pause. Pause. Wait for it. And it's a robot. So. Dem robots is coming for our gerbs, but nope, not so much, at least not in England, where a robot just got fired from a grocery store for being a bad worker. Now, I'm not sure if we should celebrate or not that humans can do grocery work better than robots, but 
there, there, there you have it. And the, the headline is from ZDNet.com. Robot fired from grocery store for utter incompetence. A robot was fired from a grocery store in Scotland for confusing some customers and freaking out others. <laughs> I love that. Freaking out others. An executive guide to the technology and market drivers behind the $135 billion robotics market. Uh, the robot, a customized version of SoftBank's Pepper Humanoid, was programmed. Well, I don't care about this detail. Let, let's get to it. We thought that a robot was a great addition to show the customers that we are always willing to do something, wanting to do something new and exciting. Elena Margiotto, who helps run the grocery chain with her family, told The Telegraph. Installed in the grocery splash ship in Edinburgh, the robot, which shop owners named Fabio, Fabio, was programmed with directions to hundreds of SKUs like Pepper Robots in recent uh, our retail environments in Japan. The unit was also programmed to be something of a ham, able to tell jokes, dispense hugs, and engage in a lively banter. You will have to go to ZDNet. I just wanted to do the tease. Go to ZDNet.com. If you go to the show notes here, you can find the link on the show notes and, and find out exactly what the heck went wrong. Chemistry creates triple power electric battery for motorcycles. So Canada has a team of chemists that may have just figured out a way to triple the range of electric powered motorcycles. And this is from InsideEVs.com. New battery tech could triple electric motorcycle Five range. Minutes. The chemistry team in the at the University of Waterloo, Canada has achieved what may be a major breakthrough in battery technology. Led by chemistry professor Linda Nazar, the team discovered that the performance of a lithium sulfur battery can be boosted dramatically by using a nano sheet of manganese dioxide. The increase has the potential to propel an electric vehicle three times further than a lithium ion battery of the same weight. And the last quote here from Nazar is, this is a major step forward and brings the Li-S Li battery one step closer to reality. New X-ray laser is a killer. Scientists are working on an X-ray laser that is exponentially more powerful than anything that came before it. The world's, uh, this is from newatlas.com, upgrades begin on Stanford's chillingly powerful X-ray laser. The world's most powerful X-ray laser is about to get far more powerful. Since it was fired up in 2009, the LINAC Coherent Light Source, LCLS for short, has helped scientists peer into the mysterious world of atoms and quantum physics. And now phase two is about to kick off the first of 37 Cryo modules has arrived at Stanford University's Slack National Accelerator Laboratory, which will boost the speed and power of the facility. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before we're shooting at each other with lasers. Won't that be fun? I'm just kidding. Or am I? And we'll end our uh, top headlines here with uh, AI Run op uh, Store Opens. Hey, we got through all the top headlines today. No cashiers, just AI. Amazon Go opens for business. And this is from dailystar.uk. Amazon opens first artificial intelligence store, which feels like shoplifting. The store is open to the public today following over a year of testing with staff members. Known as Amazon Go, the store uses cameras and sensors to track what shoppers remove and return to the shelves. This means there are no tills or queues to pay for goods. Customers are free to walk out of the store once they are finished browsing and will be billed automatically by the company. Gianna Pierini, vice president of Amazon Go, said in an interview that the store worked very well throughout the test phase thanks to four years of prior leg work. This technology didn't exist, Perini said, walking through the Seattle store. It was really advancing the state of the art of computer vision and machine learning. If you look at these products, you can see 
They're super similar, she said, of two near identical two minutes drinks next to each other. And then yeah, you click on the link, dailystar.uk, uh, .co.uk, you can, you can read more. And they also have a video for your enjoyment. But those were the top headlines. What are the headlines that we didn't get to today? We have Pennsylvania Supreme Court orders state to redraw illegally gerrymandered congressional map. Supreme Court rules for D.C. police in raucous party case. That's a bad story. Catalonia crisis, Puigdemont's Denmark visit, a provocation. An absolute and direct threat to democracy. Anglicare warns about charities crackdown. That's a story uh, out of Australia where they're trying to limit foreign foreign aid and one minute that the, that the that the laws will will fundamentally hurt uh, charities throughout Australia. Iran threatens U.S. Navy ships amid massive war drills. Turkish delegation in Athens over coup plot case. And that is uh, the, 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 the Greeks have some Turkish soldiers who are seeking asylum uh, after, after the failed coup. 30 seconds. Uh, they, they skedaddled to Greece and the Turks want them back. Syria Kurds say Turkish operation clear support for Daesh. Yeah, the Turks are supporting the Islamo-fascist nut burgers and, and, and working with them hand-in-hand, hand, using them in their military Ten seconds. In NASA monitors 5,000 space debris objects. Russian-German physicists create impossible material for quantum computers. There you go. There are your headlines. Uh, that is your headlines for the day. For January 23rd, 2018. If you'd like to read more about the stories we're covered today, again, go to isheadlines.com and you can find the show notes for today, January 23rd, 2018. Or you can click on the links provided in the descriptions on both the Facebook video and the YouTube video. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news until tomorrow at 12 30 p.m eastern standard time this is paul gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day fellow travelers